Good evening, folks. My name is Leslie Osoyan, and this is my co-host, Kathy Stickley. We're um, from Better Weathers Field. Um, today is Friday, February, March 16th, <laughs> 2012. Um, welcome to our show. We have a great show tonight. We have um, Pets on Wheels CT, stands for Connecticut.org. Um, Elaine Papanik with us tonight, and we're going to talk all about pets, and we're really excited to, to have you watch the show and, and learn all about this program. So um, let me introduce Elaine to everyone. Hi, Elaine. How are you? Hi. Thanks for having me on your show. You're welcome. We're glad to have you here and um, learn all about your program and all about the pets. And So why don't we start off and talk about um, what Pets on Wheels CT is all about? Well, Pets on Wheels of Connecticut, our mission is that no one should be denied their own pet. And that was the basis, the focus for founding the organization. And through a referral network of professionals who we have networked, gone out and seeked through towns, through community centers, senior centers, wherever we could to get the word out, hospitals, um, the medical community, that we're looking for professionals who work with people and they know, you know about their lives and they may know that they would love to have a cat or dog in their life, but they don't. And they, you know, maybe they have a financial issue, maybe they have a transportation issue, but there's an obstacle. Okay. So a lot of people that we deal with have given up all hope of ever having a cat or dog again. And that's, it's very rewarding when we can change that. Mm -hmm. So how do you get the message out there that you're out there, you're available, you're a great service to those, those people? We continue to network um, with the, refer the social workers that we have on board so far. Um, we've uh, spoken at um, some events that the medical community has sponsored. We try to speak with doctors, um, faith-based organization outreach programs uh, to continue to get the word out. We also um, we network with individuals, uh, all our recipients, the social workers that we do have. We keep in contact with them after we have a placement we have post-placement visits with our mm -hmm. recipients. We call the, re the social worker, let them know. Um, any way that we can, we're still trying to build our referral network because there's a lot of people that are not aware of us yet. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you been um, doing this program for? Well, we were formally, we got our nonprofit status in 2008. Uh, okay. 2009, 2010, we really spent a lot of time getting the website up. It's, we're all volunteer organizations, so if we had somebody volunteer all their services. Wow. Uh, develop the website. That took almost a year, designed the brochure. Um, and um, really, before you get your website up, it's kind of tough to sell your program. Yeah. Right. So 2000, the end of 2009 into 2010, we were really able to go out there and, and, and network, and the social workers were... Yep. Because it is a new concept, mm -hmm. um, but a few of them came on board. Uh, we had some. We've started having more and more placements, and you know we try to put the placement. We have an e-newsletter, and we try to you know publish. You know who you know, we've placed another animal, what we're doing, yep. um, and we just keep working at it. So you're a relatively new nonprofit organization. Is it just? Um, is it um, across the United States? Or just in Connecticut. It's a special just in Connecticut. That's why we are Pets on Wheels of Connecticut. Of Connecticut. Yes, just, just Connecticut itself. So we wouldn't find Pets on Wheels of Massachusetts if I had a relative that lived in Massachusetts. There's organizations that are just plain Pets on Wheels in other states, but okay. they are um, pet therapy and they're local organizations. I checked it out. Uh, the name came to me one night several years ago, wow. so I Googled it. So that's why we're of Connecticut. Of Connecticut. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and so your mission is, is really to, um, and you're different from the therapy because what you're really doing is you're giving these um, owners, these people become owners. Permanent a, placement. Permanent placement. We get a, animals out of rescue shelters and into people's homes. That's fantastic. And these people, as I say, had just given up hope they would have um, a pet. Yep. And how many... Sorry, Leslie. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> how many, how many just another question that popped in. How many placements have you had since you've started? Um, we have about seven. We've got about four or five people in the pipeline now. They're definitely starting to come in more. We've had yep. more people inquire. Some just weren't qualified. Yep. Unfortunately, they weren't able to fully take care of the animal themselves or a variety of reasons. Yep. But we're really making um, a lot of headway, especially this year. Um, 
we have an, a nice board of directors. We're getting more volunteers mm -hmm. um, going out to the universities, um, oh, the college fantastic. students, um, seeking volunteers um, if they want to do an internship with us. Um, Oh, well, fantastic. we want to work, you know, there are so many benefits to the human-animal bond, and we're all about doing something about it. You mm -hmm. know, you read the studies, mm -hmm. and they're finding more and more benefits every day. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you can read studies all day long, and, and right. this is one of the reasons I founded it. Let's do something about it. And what my, my um, real issue was, how do you find the people that, you really, that really need the help? Out, they need the right. outside assistance. Right. And that's when we... I thought of the referral network. Right. So it's not necessarily um, a mom and a dad and the, uh, the daughter and the son, the both parents work, and they could easily go find a puppy or a cat at a shelter themselves or go, get, uh, go buy a dog or, or, or a cat. It's really more for those individuals who, like you said before, have some sort of obstacle in getting a pet. And well, well, some families, even both working, have some. Sometimes they have an obstacle. Mm -hmm. They're they're almost on a fixed income with the mm -hmm. economy the way it is. Yeah. Most of the time, we're working with seniors. We're working with veterans. Okay. We are working with um, s single people, but um, people from all walks of life. Okay. Um, they might not have transportation, so they mm -hmm. don't have an animal. Right. But a young family maybe has a child that would read better, you know, to a dog, mm -hmm. and maybe wow. they're, you know with the job situation the way it yeah. is now, or the lack of them. Um, right. There's families out there that are that really are just stretched to the limit, and they can't afford to have that dog. Right. Well, if, if we can pay the vet bill, and you can have a dog for your child so that child can read to the dog, yeah. that's what it's that's all what about. Doing. So they wouldn't really have to know um, that referral network. They would have to know who to contact. Well, a teacher could be a, re a referring person, okay. social worker, physician, discharge nurses, faith-based organization outreach programs. I mean, many people, you're having troubles in your life. Okay. You turn to your, your faith. Yeah. Um, so we're looking to build our network. Right. There's a lot of people that still don't know about us. Yeah, but you're getting out there. Yes, we are. Yeah. We are. And you've got the website, too, and we keep showing Pets the, on Wheels CT. Oh, org. there we go. Pets on Wheels CT. Org. Um, <laughs> um, but so let me just interrupt just real quick. So, yeah. so take us through the process. So we find somebody, um, somebody in need, and they contact you. Then do you go to the shelters to find an animal that would suit their needs, or do no. you have animals somewhere? Um, no. queued up to be adopted. We're usually <clears throat> contacted first by a social worker saying okay. I you know I, I have somebody that's interested or I just heard about your program and what I ask them to do or, or volunteer whoever takes the call yeah. is to go onto our website and send in an application. It's very brief, few mm -hmm. questions. Everything is kept you know confidential. Uh, confidential absolutely. Recipients are only referred by their first name, no last names, etc. So they send in the uh, application. Um, it's reviewed by our volunteers or myself. We contact a social worker to get a little more background, um, basic background. Mm -hmm. Again, they, they can only t tell just so much. And, um, you know, we ask the basic questions. Have, you know, they, have they had an animal before? Um, and, and they usually fill us in on this or that. Then we contact the uh, potential recipient on the phone and we speak with them and, and if we think that it, it you know it could be a qualifiable uh, recipient we set up uh, to go out and meet them so we'll have a few volunteers that will go out so they get to meet us we you know get to meet them that's fantastic so um, a lot involved well uh, we want to make sure that it's a smooth transition mm -hmm. we want to make sure that they understand um, you know what we'll do and that's the other yeah. thing okay we want to we want to make sure the obstacle, maybe it's the veterinary bills. Maybe they can't pay for the annual checkup. Um, so we actually have a contract between us and them. Okay, that wow. we agree for the lifetime of the animal. But um, that we will pay for their annual veterinary checkup. Or maybe it's transportation. They can't bring the animal to the vet, so that's what we'll agree to do. Maybe they need us to bring food to them. They can pay for it, but they, again, no transportation. Whatever the obstacle is, everybody's situation is different. Okay. It and sounds so, like it's very unique situations that you're dealing with yeah, too. It's not absolutely. one size fits all. Yeah. So then it's a matter of, okay, what, 
rescue shelters are in your area, animals usually choose us. We like to say we choose them, but they, <laughs> they choose us. So, no, they go down to the shelters. We may meet them there. We have oh, volunteers. Wow. Oh, yeah, we'll meet oh, them so the there. Oh, so the recipients go? Oh, the reci it's their oh, animals, oh, oh, so they oh, okay. choose their own animal. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I was wondering, like, if you had, if was the animal chosen at the time? Oh, no, so, yeah. No, yeah. no, they go down to the rescue shelter, wherever it happens to be, what's close for to them, them. Mm -hmm. or if we have to pick them up and bring them. Um, we've done that. Um, and sometimes it seems that it's much easier for people to choose cats than dogs. But, um, no, they go down and they... It may take them a while, but when they find the right animal, um, it clicks. I happened to be uh, involved in one one day, and this gentleman had gone to about five, six different cats, and he had gone on the website, and he had a list, and uh, he had two more cats, and he took um, a cat out of the cage, and this cat nuzzled her little nose under his chin, and his mother said, I think somebody just chose you, <laughs> and, and, and it's true. Well, yeah. how, how, how heartwarming and rewarding. I know, it, yeah. It, um, it is. It is very rewarding. Yeah. Um, and we actually went out, um, a few of the volunteers went out a few weeks later to visit with Stephen and Martini. And uh, Martini is just the happiest cat in the world. And, and Stephen's mother wrote us a nice letter of thanks. Um, her, her son has a few emotional issues, and he is happy. Awesome. Perfect. He's not lonely. Oh, fantastic. Nice. And we've heard this more than once. And, and it's not just loneliness. Some people, I have one gentleman that said, I, I want a, a dog to walk. I want a reason to get out of bed in the morning. A um, little depression there. And I, I love dogs. Well, Perfect what, what's stopping you from having a dog? Uh, in his situation, he says, I, I really need your help for a year or two with the annual uh, veterinary checkup. Okay. Wow. So he's looking for Done. a dog as we speak. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Fantastic. And so in order, you know, you said you're a nonprofit. Yes. And nonprofits always need donations. We do. And I noticed on the website it's very easy um, to go and make a donation. You can make a small monetary donation, and then you also uh, provide some options as to how that money could be dispersed, whether it's cat food, dog food, um, you know, things like that. So Sponsoring. We also have the option where you can make a monthly. It's automatically taken out of your checking or savings. Wow. Um, it's on there as well. Yeah. Um, and I know uh, being in the private sector, uh, the corporations encourage their employees to make donations to United Way. Um, I'm going to assume that you are a, a, a provider, an option on there. We are there. a service provider. No, we're not usually listed, but people can write in Pets on Wheels of Connecticut. Okay. on their sheet okay and whatever money they allot will go to us wonderful people can also send checks to us um at our yeah. post office box yeah here's another thought that i had um having a daughter that has gone through girl scouts and brownies and things like that even at um our elementary school they'll set up they'll have to do some type of community service badge uh, one of them, a lot of times, is they collect, you know, blankets and toys and things for um, dogs or cats at the Humane Society. Besides monetary donations, would you take um, donations such as that if the Girl Scouts or a Brownie Troop wanted to do some kind of Absolutely. fundraising? Absolutely. Uh, we would love food, oh, great. dog or cat food, um, kitty litter, um, cat bowls, uh, but mainly the food. The food, okay. Um, so you would take a... Oh, absolutely. And we'd love to work with them. And we would love to acknowledge them on our website. Oh, how great. Um, that they've done that. Well, yeah. I think it's a wonderful... Anybody that wants to have a yeah. fundraiser for us, any group, yeah. we would certainly want to acknowledge them on I our website, uh, on our yeah. Facebook, with their permission, because yeah. we appreciate it. You know, yeah. we, we are only going into our third year, really. Right. And with the economy the way it is, it's yeah. tough for charities. Yep. We're looking for donations. The other issue, if people can't afford the annual veterinary checkup, how are they going to afford um, a right. sick visit? Right. And I know um, when you're a freshman at Weathersfield High School um, and or a confirmation candidate at either Incarnation or any church, I would suppose, um, you know, they have to do some kind of, you know, community service, give back. Mm -hmm. So this could be something that, you know, a couple of students could get together oh, yes. and create a uh, project 
around collecting donations. So not only the Girl idea. Scouts, but you also have, um, you know, the freshmen uh, students it could be a great idea for them donate to donate money. Donate you know, money. they could have people donate money at, you know, the cafeteria, maybe have a bake sale or something. Or a coin or, box or something. Just well, kind of we have a few change. collection boxes, and believe it or not, one of them in one place we have, uh, we've made $100 in six weeks. That's a lot of money for us. That's fantastic. That is because great. our real big variable is sick visits. If one of our recipients' oh, animals right. gets sick, sick, you know, some of these bills can run seven, eight hundred dollars. Right. So that's the unknown variable for us. We have a goal this year that we'd love to raise at least twenty-five thousand if we can. We'd also like to place at least twelve, and as much as twenty animals this year. So we would through two thousand twelve. Yes. Okay. Wow, that's so, a lot. Well, we would like to make an impact, and that's people and or their families. Um, that's our goal, mm -hmm. and we'll see how it goes. We, as I say, we're already getting more referrals in this year than we have in past years because people are becoming more aware of us. Right. And um, we've gotten some testimonials from mm -hmm. people, which is very rewarding to hear how you know their lives have changed so much. Mm -hmm. But um, our, our volunteers that go out and visit, uh, they, they come back and, you know, you get more out of it than you give. Yeah. So do you have a physical office location? No, no, no. We, we don't. We, um, uh, I, I work out of uh, my Glastonbury home and other volunteers work out of their homes. <coughs> There's no office to go to. Um, we have a lot of volunteers that do a lot of the office administrative work. At their own home. Our volunteers are wonderful yeah. and we, we could use more of them. Mm -hmm. So let me just ask you this. Um, when the person or the recipient has been referred yeah. and they talk with you and you believe that they may be a, candi a candidate qualified, yeah. qualified. Um, then you or one of the other volunteers goes out, goes to their home and meets with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that point you make a decision, yes, they're, they're qualified. And then you su suggest to them to go to the local shelter. Yes. Now, do you, um, what if they don't know where the local shelter is? Do you have that information? Um, we find it out if, okay. if a lot, or in the Hartford area, we pretty much yeah. know. And a lot of times the social workers, like I said, the social workers, I'm, I'm very impressed, uh, you know, the knowledge and how involved they are with the clients. But a lot of them will say, well, there's a nice shelter down the street. Okay. Um, we have some, uh, we have a gentleman in Thompson. Now, I'm not, you know, familiar with Thompson, but he knows the shelters there. And the things that are important is the animals, the reason that we want them to come from shelters is they have to have a full medical checkup. They have to have all their shots, oh, right. spayed or neutered, and they're behaviorally profiled, which is very important. You have a family coming in, mm -hmm. um, and I, I worked, I volunteered eight and a half years in a shelter, and there'll be a sign on a cage. This, uh, I, it was on the cat side. This cat is is not for to be with young children, okay. or it's, so. All of that is important. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why we deal with local rescue shelters. Right. And we want to get cats and dogs out of them. Right. I worked eight and a half years. There were cats that languished six and eight months in cages. I mean, it, it, oh. it's just heartbreaking. That is heartbreaking. And you've got all these people that for various reasons would benefit from having a cat or dog and don't. So yeah. that's what Pets on Wheels of Connecticut is all about. Okay, so they go to the shelter and then they find the one they love, the cat yeah. or the dog. Then what? Do they make contact with you again? Because I know you said that there was a contract. Yes, there's a. There's so how the, how do they finalize it? Well, the contract is usually signed um, at the time of the interview. We decide on what is it what is it that they need help with. Okay. Um, they can go to the rescue shelter themselves and contact us, uh, or one of the volunteers can go down and meet them. Um, usually, if we need to pay the rescue shelter fee, they. They take the cat or dog home, and we pay the rescue shelter fee. Okay, great. Um, today, we had a placement of a cat. Um, this woman, she needed a cat carrier, a litter box. She didn't have any of it because she didn't think she was ever going to have a cat again. Well, we had people had donated cat carriers, um, food bowls. Uh, Fantastic. Uh, litter, et cetera. So we brought all that with us. And uh, she went home with everything she needed to get oh, started. Wow. And uh, she has her cat. And uh, she looked Fantastic. like she was walking on air, walking out of the rescue shelter. She oh, was so happy. That's so it great. Was, it, it's just, it was rewarding to see. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I think um, what's really special about this is that, um, you know, you as the founder came up with this idea 
and you know pulled it all together over the past four years to starting probably starting your fourth year. So how did you? How did you? How did the idea get born? How did you come up with that idea? You know, it came to me many years ago. I I was in 2000. I started volunteering um, at a, a particular animal uh, shelter, clean and feed. I've been an animal lover all my life, and um, I started, you know, realizing, you know, we got all these cats, and my God, they're they're in cages for months, especially the FIV positive. You know, they can never go out, and so it started really bothering me more than, more so than ever. And then I started, you know, reading more about the benefits of the human animal bond, and it's like, you know, but we're not doing anything about it, or we're not doing enough. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking, we've got all these people that are talking about we have a lonely society, and or there's people that they would benefit so much from having a, a cat or dog, people that have heart attacks even. Mm -hmm. The rate of living five years out of a person who has an animal versus one that doesn't is 50%. That's wow. big. That is big. So yeah. I started thinking, how do we find people who really need cats and dogs that don't have them? And the referral network popped in my head one day. Wow. People that work with people, they mm -hmm. know them. That's and right. So it's actually been coming over... Uh, several Evolving. years yeah. and then I started it but I had volunteers right away and the mm -hmm. volunteers I can't say enough for the volunteers because them. there's a lot of things that I can't do yeah. and um, they're there Perfect. Uh, you know Great. on the phone um, and if, if there's somebody listening that wants to volunteer we would love for them to volunteer email us at info at pets on org. We would love to hear from you, um, answer any questions people have, uh, professionals. We'd love to hear from anybody. Please let us know. And if there's people out there that are in the medical profession, maybe they're a nurse or a doctor or a, um, like a counselor an or an internist, yeah. that you, know, you see patients you know, all day, all mm -hmm. week, that might benefit from this um, bond, mm -hmm. having a bond with an animal. Um, to teachers, too. Yeah, teachers, yeah. Uh, priests, clergymen. Well, the pet therapy programs in the hospitals, when you see a person that or requests, now they're getting larger and larger, the programs, mm -hmm. I know this, who requests to have a dog, um, so you know they're an animal lover, you know, that's the time to ask them before they leave, do you have your own dog? Mm -hmm. Well, no, I don't. I'm not able to do this or that. Well, that's, that's the point where we love for them to refer be referred to us, um, and, and all just about all the hospitals in the area mm -hmm. have animal therapy programs, mm -hmm. and just about every day convalescent homes. I, I've talked to before I started this. I talked to convalescent homes. I, I I visited hospitals. I had the privilege of one hospital letting me shadow a doctor who's wow. done this, and I uh, shadowed her, and she had a list of rooms to go to. And she told me, she said, uh, I may have a room, but if the dog won't walk in, we don't go in. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the dog would walk in another room that wasn't on the list. And yes. she said, very rarely uh, were we ever asked to leave. Mm -hmm. So they have an intuition that humans don't have. And this is really what we, we need to utilize more and more in people's lives. Uh, diabetics, you mm -hmm. know, that you're, they're realizing that animals can detect that they may have and be going to have an attack before it's going to happen. Wow. And other uh, epilepsy, I'm oh, understanding right. now. Cancer, too. Elaine, let me just tell you this interesting story. When my um, father-in-law was, he was dying from cancer, and um, I had a flood in my apartment at the time, and I had this little cat. I had to get the cat out of the house because they had to clean up my apartment, and um, so the cat stayed with him and kept him incredible company, would lay on him, was always around him. It was such an incredible source of comfort for him. He was in so much pain from the cancer. Mm -hmm. and, and to this day, think about that. My little Frankie, who's no longer here, yeah. was such a source of comfort for him um, at that time. It really was. I mean, I don't know if it like sidetracked his mind or what it was, but it was really, really wonderful. It's a bond. They yeah. bond. And that's like under the benefits of your program. It's listed in that like um, circle of uh, all the benefits. And but we only listed a few. Yeah. There's, there's literally hundreds. And as I say, they're finding more and more every day. So that's why no one should be denied their own pet. Yeah. I think it's just a, a wonderful idea. And I it give is. you so much credit for taking your idea and bringing it to um, 
bring it to fruition and now it's a, a real program and a real project and now what you need is people to get um, for it to kind of take off now because you got all the pieces and parts together so now you need to increase the referrals and then increase the match then you get matches increased and then get people um, you know uh, to donate we need donations you need donations. we really do yeah um, the sick visits like I say it really is a concern of ours yeah so um, so that's not something that you're currently paying for or you well, there's certain people that, you know, have said that, you know, if my dog gets sick, I'm not going to be yeah. able to pay yeah. the visit. And um, and that's understandable. So you never know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a cat one day out of the blue that was outside, broke his leg, $700. Well, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. so we really need to build our funds up yep. because we don't want, and the other thing is we don't want to turn anybody away. Right. Yeah. Now, um, how about, let's just go on the other side, networking with the veterinarians to say, you know, this animal is part of this program. Is there, you know, anything that the veterinarian could do to either donate time or, um, you know, services? We for haven't this been as successful person? with that yet. We're working on yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we're we're working on it. Just um, another. There. Yeah. It's another part. That's we're working on that a little bit more now mm -hmm. because we're getting more referrals and. and well, you're learning as you go too. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you you know it's it, look at the economy. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's been a yeah. tough economy, but um, there's more opportunity for us, and that's why I say we don't want to turn <laughs> anybody away. Um, but look how many people are out of work that you know. Yeah. And so. Um, it's hard even, to. Even families with homes. Yeah, but we just got a dog at Christmas time, so we decided that you know had enough of the electronics. Yeah, high enough <laughs> Game Boys, iPods, uh, Xboxes, computers <laughs> in my house. I'm like, I don't need another electronic yeah. under the tree. So we decided to get a dog. Yeah, I jumped in with both feet. It's been a wonderful you know experience. It's, Still on the honeymoon. Yeah. Still on the yeah. honeymoon period. <laughs> still a puppy. Still a puppy. That's right. That's right. But I was reading an article, and I'm not sure if I got this right, but when you um, decide to take a dog on, it probably it costs you something like between food and um, toys and vet visits, shots. It's like an extra, I don't know, three, four thousand dollars annually. Like that's what they cost you. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's not quite that high, but. You know, it, it is an extra expense. Right, right. So, you know, you, you take on this loving animal, and all you want to do once you make that bond is to continue to have that animal with you. So oh, absolutely. So if they can't yeah. afford it, you're there to um, help them out in, um, you know, maintaining that pet and, and keeping it in their home. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's an incredible resource, absolutely. really. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So you really want to increase that that referral network. That's well, the like referral network, big. and we want to sustain the placements we have. We don't yeah. want to, you know, right. we don't want to say, gee, we're sorry, we can't help you this year. I mean, that's not why we went into this. Yeah. We're right. all animal lovers. Right. And we we like what we see when we're changing people's, the impact that we're having on people's lives. Right, mm -hmm. right. So we're, we're really in this to stay in it. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this quickly, because we only have a couple more minutes, but um, tell me about Strut Your Mutt. I know we talked before we aired that that's not something that you are doing this year, but maybe we could talk about that just a little bit yeah. and any big fundraising you have going on this year. Um, we had the last two years our Strut Your Mutt Dog walk a -thon. I just love that, Strut, Strut Your Mutt. Mutt. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was wonderful. Uh, we had it at Wickham Park, and um, we had several people come out with their dogs, strut their mutts, and we yeah. had games for the dogs and the people, <laughs> and there was prizes for the dog, the cutest dog, the largest dog, um, the uh, loudest barker, all <laughs> kinds of stuff. And we had vendors, we had sponsors. It was a fun oh. afternoon, yeah. and and they and we did walk and we did uh, balloon tosses with the kids that were there and. <laughs> Um, but this year, we really, you know, we've really set a high goal for ourselves because we really want to help more people. Mm -hmm. And so we thought maybe smaller fundraisers, and we haven't uh, formally um, established, anything, established yet. anything yet. But we thought smaller and maybe take a year off from Strut Your Mutt, although we, do, we did have a ball at it, I'll I tell bet. you. Um, but we, you know, the the better we are known, the more people that are going to turn out. Also, we'd love That's to true. fill Wickham Park. 
yeah. with That'd strut your mutters. Yep. yep. And I'll tell you, it's so fun. They came in costumes. Strut your mutters. You <laughs> got more than one mutt. The, <laughs> the dogs came in costumes. Some of the people did. Oh, it was great. a fun, fun, fun afternoon. Super. Super. So Elaine, we just want to um, have you just mention again, maybe your website, how people can contact you, especially those uh, referral network professionals that you would like uh, to, to make contact with. So why don't you, you know, just, just tell them how they can reach you. Please email us uh, at info at petsonwheelsct.org. Um, anybody, uh, questions, um, and we'll get back to you. Um, we're looking for donations. If you don't want to use PayPal, you can mail a check to P.O. Box 654, Glastonbury, Connecticut, 06033. It is tax deductible. You will get a receipt. Um, Checks payable to? Pets on Wheels of Connecticut. Okay. Beautiful. Fantastic. Is there a phone number or just mostly by uh, email? Mainly or? by email to okay. start with, yes. Okay, yes. very good. Yes. Well, Lane, thank you so much for being on thank our show. We you. really appreciate it's it. It's been and a pleasure. I think it's a, it's a great program, and, and I wish you, and I know Kathy, too, yeah. a lot of success with it. It's new, so yeah, I think it will catch on. I really do. Well, and I hope it, you can get into the it, senior it, centers. You get, I'd love to. I'd you know? love to. So thank you again. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everyone. Good night.